you know, we've been deploying the smart grid now for you know a number of years. But I think in 10, 20 years from now, when we look when we look back, we'll find that you know we're pretty in, we're really in the early stages of this market and of this industry. Um, where do you see um, you know the smart grid going, and what's happening next in the smart grid? First of all, look at what we have today. Right, we have um, products that were single purpose that uh, do a good job at what they're working on. Uh, they operate speeds that are below what you had in a dial-up line. And you think about managing a, a asset in our communities, which is so important with such a small bandwidth, lacking security, there's going to be some big changes. We're going to want to do a lot of things to help manage the, 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 uh, the smart grid. And to do that, we're going to have to have platforms that are fast, that have security at their core, and they can handle multiple applications as part of the architecture of what they built up, not something that's been bolted on. I was a 34th employee of Nextel, so I have a pretty good appreciation of what a cellular carrier is looking for. And, and what it has been a tipping point has been the carriers and the utilities both being able to match their particular requirements. So utilities requirements is I need to be able to have a whole lot of devices on this network. I need to be sure that the price is competitive to what it costs me to build a, a smaller, slower speed mesh network. <clears throat> and I need to be able to provide the reporting re uh, regulations and meet the, meet the requirements of my business. On the other hand, the, the cellular carriers have always been about bringing high revenue customers. Well, the number of those high revenue customers are now declining and the cellular business growth is slowing. So now what we see is the carriers are looking for new ways to utilize their network and enable their network to drive up their revenue. And the machine to machine marketplace of which the smart grid is the key element <clears throat> is the way to make that happen. So what we've seen is that they're able to bring on uh, uh, smart grid elements, leveraging the network, but it's critical for them to be sure that their network does not get overloaded by the utility elements. The key is that you can't just have a dumb network out there that's operating. You think some of the sectors we have right, have 10,000 units in it, and if all of those units light up at the same time, it takes the sector off the air. As a, as a public cellular carrier, I'm not gonna let that happen because you're a $100 a month customer, the utilities are paying cents per unit per month to have access to that. I can't afford to have them distort my network. So what's next for us is the ability to provide distributed intelligence at the edge, enabling the products to operate smartly. Most of the uh, access to the network is gonna happen in times where the cellular network is offline. And when there are issues that need to be reported to the utility during the peak periods, <clears throat> we're able to manage that information to where the utility gets what they need, but it doesn't overload the cellular network. We are at the heart of the smart grid. We understand where we're positioning their network, and we've got to be the one to, to satisfy the customer. So there's a focus throughout our company. Everybody in our organization has uh, customer satisfaction as one of their goals and objectives in their particular area of the business.